My name is Sergey, and I enjoy polishing turds, apparently. So, between Barkeeper's Friend, uh, I don't know what the hell that is, but it is a steel cleaner, and a uh, bunch of elbow grease, this exhaust still looks like shit. And honestly, I, I don't even think it deserves any more elbow grease. Like, see, there's still rust there. Because, honestly, anybody in their right mind would swap this 40-pound thing out for something that actually makes some power. But I don't have a full system right now to throw on. And uh, so it's going to have to go back on for now. And yes, um, it's still a little swirly, but it'll clean up a little bit more. But I really don't see the need to go that much harder at at it and even if you get the like front header to be shiny it'll just turn to shit in half an hour of riding so i'm just gonna leave it leave it well enough alone for now next up is a bit more cleaning and then i am putting a chain on so I grabbed, uh, lucky for me, I had 525 sprockets in stock. So I grabbed uh, a couple of those. Uh, I think it's a Sunstar rear and uh, Super Sprocks front, both steel because street bike, and the uh, GT X1R chain. And as I was doing it, I was kind of thinking like a lot of people complain about this red uh chain break kit they're like 30 bucks pretty much everywhere i think harbor freight even has them too um and rightfully so because it's an awful chain break but the thing is if you have a dremel or a grinder or something you don't need the chain break part you just use the riveter part um and the way i actually end up using these this thing because I don't have a nicer one, um, is I grind off the uh, heads of the pins where I want to break the chain, and then I use the chain break and pin and all that happy stuff. So it works okay. It, um, really, the main value of it is the riveter. Everything else is kind of I can take or leave. So anyway, more stuff to go onto the bike. The funny thing I found is I, for the life of me, can't find the couple of screws that go in here. Um, I also, for whatever reason, do not have the lock plate for the drive shaft. So I'm going to have to order one. That way I have a new one. But I can still do the chain. It's n Nothing's preventing me from doing that. Oh, yeah, and... Um, I ran the clutch cable, it's not hooked up to anything, it's not adjusted, but uh, I put the clutch worm on too. Which I'm going to have to take off to put the nut on. But, whatever, doesn't matter. Um, so, kind of slowly progressing. We'll see how far I can get. But, for now, I'm going to go rivet this chain. Now, one thing that was never going to be a question is what turn signals go on. And, of course, I have thousands of these things well maybe not thousands right now but dozens at least um they're super easy to install they're huge and they're bright so that's what's going on here and the way to do that is take one of the uh factory mounting things well the front one's a little thinner than this one but whatever cut this little tab off and blow out the hole so that it ends up looking like this and then you can just shoot the turn signal through it and uh, tighten the nut down so that's for the front for the rear same thing i haven't gotten here yet but basically i need to take this apart slightly cut this down drill out the hole and then i'll have a turn signal mount so that's exciting. So while I was waiting for parts to show up for this and a couple of other bolts all over the place, you know, whatever, 
Um, I got some uh, stuff cleaned because cleaning stuff is always important. I got the K&N cleaned and oiled. Um, I don't have the water situation in my shop is trash. So I took home all the hoses, cleaned them up in the sink, um, took the radiator and washed it with soap in the sink. Um, it's still a little brownish. It's hard to get it to show up on camera, but that's more like stained and dirty. And there's only so many thousands of hours I can spend toothbrushing everything around. So next up for the next little while, it looks like it's just assembly because I have a bunch of cleaned parts. I'm waiting on some things and I have to find some things. But in the meantime, I can knock out everything that is ready to go and free up some space because these bins of random stuff that are, you know, kind of everywhere are, um, they're a little difficult for me to work around. And also, I think what, it, what it's coming down to is every hour I spend on this thing is an hour I'm not spending on taking apart a bike or cleaning parts that are for sale or refurbing parts or whatever. I have this whole stack of bins of things to list. I have, um, well, cartridges that I need to figure out what I'm doing with because they're not quite straight. So uh, I need to find parts for them. I have more stuff to list. And then I have this DRZ motor swap project, which, um, I'm not sure what's going on with that, but my buddy Aaron did a great job on uh, fixing up the other motor for me that's going in here. But that's that's a different story. I don't know if I actually want to make this a vid. I think um, I think I'm gonna have uh, one of the one of my help guys take a swing at it, make a mess of it, and then I'll step in if. Uh, when the interns can't handle it. I don't know. No, I have every every bit of trust in them. But uh, also this DRZ was actually kind of a cool bike. It was uh, the Bike Experience USA trainer. So it had the automatic shifter. Like the shifters got holes drilled for the electronic shifter that would shift it up and down. Um, but uh, somebody popped the motor. As, as I heard it described, it sounded like a robot fucking a trash can. So... Maybe I'll find out what's in there. But in the meantime, I need to knock this out or get it to be at least as together as I can so that um, I free up space, I free up project space. Even if it stands there uh, mostly together waiting for parts, it'll take up a lot less space than everywhere. Well, and it's got some parts hidden up there and yeah, I need, I need to get it more together. So the stock bars are 26 inches wide, uh, give or take, I'm sure it's a centimeter number. These are 31, and while um, I want to leave a couple of inches of, let's say, error uh, for now, I really would rather be in like the 28 range or something like that. Um, maybe 27. You really don't want to be 36 wide because it'll be really hard to hold the bars. You'll be kind of doing a push-up on the bike. So I am going to take off, uh, well, for right now I'm going to take off an inch and a half on each side and see how that works out because at most all I'm losing is a couple of holes drilled, which isn't a big deal. Uh, see how that works out. Uh, get some controls mounted up. Um, I started making a video on how to do throttle cables. I realized that it was completely meaningless without, like, you know, starting from a mounted setup. So I'm going to have to redo that video. But uh, cut an inch and a half on each side. That puts me at 28 wide. And uh, drill some holes in the top for the locating pins for the pods. And, uh, at that point I should be able to, you know, mount up the controls and throw a seat on and see how the ergonomics feel. 
and I have to go get my gas tank from home because it's living at home. I really should probably have a better tool to do this, but this is about the only way I can get this marked up. So now I'm going to pull the bar and go play in the messy part of the shop where, because I don't want uh, shavings all over the place here. And yes, of course, I can use a hacksaw or a grinder or pretty much anything else. They're just aluminum. But because I already have a bandsaw and I want to get as clean a cut as I can, I'm going to use the bandsaw. And... Honestly, that was probably the most awkward thing I've ever cut on a bandsaw because it just kept getting in the way and hitting stuff and dancing around. But it did get a decent enough straight cut. And uh, I can always finish it off with a, with a flap wheel or uh, the belt grinder or something. But uh, for now, I think this is going to have to do because I still want to see if... Uh, if this feels right before I spend any kind of energy getting it finished. So yeah, anyway, got my hole drilled, got the controls mounted up. Well, the one side, I need to figure out if I like this before I, you know, put further holes into it and do the clutch side. I also don't have a good clutch perch because the one that was on the bike was gnarly and all the ones I seem to have in stock are S ones so I have to go hunt down an N clutch perch weird it's super weird for me to like not have something because there's so much of everything um, but yeah the bars feel narrow enough now uh, I Kind of, I threw a seat on and tried it, but I don't have a right rear set on for some reason. And it felt super weird without the tank. So this is going to have to wait until I grab a gas tank and see what I want to do with the bars. And then there were more used part disappointments. I thought I was going to use these really cool um, Aprilia or uh, KTM or whatever style mirrors because I had them in stock, but then apparently I didn't give them a good look over when I was listing them because this one 
has some damage to it. So these are not going to be it. Something else is going to have to be it. And I, and I have to go fix the listing and show the damage on them. So that's kind of disappointing because, well, the good news is nobody bought them. The bad news is I don't get to use them right now. And lastly, I'll leave you with an interesting observation I just made. Except for the dealer guys, I don't think a whole lot of people get to work on really nice, clean bikes where your hands aren't super filthy. Yeah, mine are a little bit, but where your hands don't get super filthy from doing minor stuff. The really nice thing about having cleaned a whole bunch of parts before putting them in is... Like, I can run cables or hoses or whatever without getting absolutely filthy. I think this might be why there's a, quite a few guys that basically don't mess with street bikes. They only deal with race bikes. Like, if it has a headlight, they don't want anything to do with it. Uh, maybe because race bikes actually get torn down often enough and cleaned and so on. Maybe... Some of the dealer guys doing warranty work on, like, higher-end brands, they might have this experience. But this is honestly, for me, this is the first time that, like, there are parts in here that I can just grab and not worry about that my hands are going to be filthy. So this is kind of cool. Like, it's a new experience for me, that's for sure, because I, really, I don't really get nice, nice bikes, and mine, you know... They get used, so I don't do that much inside them. And I don't clean them to anywhere near this level, so. Anyway, hope you're enjoying this. More to come.